was originally going to put my books on there, but um, I'll do my best balancing them on, on there instead. And yeah, I am a published author from a very long time ago. We were talking earlier about safe sex, and this was mine, Unsafe Sex. I mean, what a dreadful title. But I had fun writing it, and someone told me, I thought it was really very sensitive, but someone told me it was just porn, so who cares? And it's out of print, so don't look for it. Okay. I once found myself in bed with a new lover, who, just at a crucial moment, uh, whispered, let me slide my huge throbbing member into your moist little pussy. It ruined the moment, as you can imagine. <laughs> Afterwards, I explained to him that such language wasn't erotic and had made me want to giggle because it was stuff of corny porn novels. And to give him credit, he received my explanation with dignity and never used such language again. The language we use is so important in setting the scene, and as a writer, I know how very difficult it can be to write about sex in ways which are arousing and inspiring, but don't give our readers the sense that they've been drowned in a bucket of bodily fluids. Now, I'm by no means an expert, but I do know that one of the best ways to learn about writing is to read. And tonight, I want to share with you some sex scenes which inspire me, and I've lost my glasses, and they're here. <laughs> okay. Ah, thank you. Okay. This is taken from 10 Minutes in the 80s by Alison Tyler. Um, and it's, her, it's a book of erotic short stories called Exposed. Uh, this young woman has been, um, uh, she's a virgin of course, and she's been picked up um, from the supermarket by this very sexy guy and he's taken her home with him. He was seated on a deck chair with his hands on his thighs. His sunglasses are low down on his nose so he could look at me over the rim. I felt power in being naked, felt a power in the way he drank in every touch of my fingertips on my stripped bare skin. It was as if he were touching me as well. When my fingers found the wetness coating my lips, he sighed before I did. I closed my eyes and leaned my head back, arching my slim hips forward, running my hands over my hip bones. The tiles were hot under my bare feet. The air was still and clear. My hair tickled against my naked back. My eyelashes flattered, fluttered against my cheeks. And then, um, without touching her, he actually takes her back home. I think that's pretty hot, but it's a very physical description. Um, the details are, you know, really graphic. His hands on, my th on his thighs, the touch of my fingertips on my stripped bare skin, fingers touching my wetness, arching my slim hips forward, my hair tickling against my naked back. We're giving a very detailed description of the physical elements. And it, I think that's well done in this case, but it's just that. It's a very good description of an idealised erotic encounter where everything is just a little bit more perfect than real life. You know, no zips get stuck and she never falls over when she's trying to take off her jeans. It's not real life, but it is hot. The next example is very much about real life. It's written by a friend of mine called Jeremy Cameron. The Financial Times described his novel Vinnie got blown away in the following way. Like some distant downbeat relative of Anthony Burgess's A Clockwork Orange, how apt. Jeremy Cameron's earthily gripping debut thriller is a fast funny trawl through the territory of London's new outlaw class. Now I'm not going to attempt to read you the excerpt um, in the Waltham, so Waltham Stowe accent it's written in. But let me tell you that the character, Nicky Burkett, a small-time car thief, he's hiding while he plots the revenge for the drug dealers who've killed his best mate, Vinny. Nicky ends up at the house of his former French teacher, Marigold. Before this, Nicky's only experience of sex has been when the mother of his child lifts a skirt when the video finished so he can put it in her. 
Somehow, Nicky ends up in bed with a glamorous marigold. And this is some of what follows. I've lost my piece of paper. So I'll read it to you from the book. Then she was back on top and it got serious. She ran her tongue down my belly and her tits across me. Christ. Mmm, I like your penis, she went. And she was in a position to have an opinion on it. Then she moved quick, rubbing up me against, kissing on the lips. Clocked myself going, ooh, like surprised. I wasn't used to all this. It was A-level fucking. Like this is what they did up Stoke Newington. It was brilliant. Ooh, I goes again. So I goes down on her. She opens her thighs, pulls her knees back, and when I touch her, she's nearly there already. I lick up through her till I find her, and it's there. I lick it backwards and forwards, first slowly, then quick, then quicker, still then. Sudden, there's a little pulse, goes once, twice. I can feel it. Then away, she arches up, holds my head, then she sits upright, cries, oh, 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 softer, oh. Then she arches again, then she lies back, shaking, going with it, rocking, side to side, loving it, friends with it, letting it roll, gradually dying down, then laughing, laughing. I lie up beside her and she hugs me. And I hugs her. Knew it made no difference, she still wanted me out the flat, only it never mattered. Knew I couldn't handle all that every night anyway, bleeding great a night a week, even... <laughs> A geezer gets knackered just thinking of it. Never got to do all that with Kelly, just thinking on it. Whew. Man, um, Kelly, she probably reckoned all that was dirty. Just a straight bit was all she wanted and all she was going to get anyway. <laughs> I'm struggling a little bit with the light, so forgive me if I'm... So what I like about this scene is that it combines an excellent description of very good sex, which very much focuses on the woman's pleasure, and gives the reader an understanding of the connection between the two people, the sophisticated French teacher and the street-savvy but also sexually very inexperienced young man. This is Nicky's discovery of A-level sex like they do it up Stoke Newington. I mean, I used to live in Stoke Newington, and I'm not sure that that's true. There's nothing romantic in this relationship, and Nicky knows he's getting kicked out the next day, but there's a warmth in there, an honest connection. Um, and we get some very physical details in Nicky's own words, which are often quite basic. You know, he talks about bellies, thighs, tongues. But when he talks about, he licks up through her, and it's there. There's a little pulse, goes once, twice. Nicky doesn't have the words to describe Marigold's genitals, but he describes her responses and her moments of climax with a sense of awe, which we don't see anywhere else in this book. This discovery won't change Nicky's world. It won't change his relationship with his girlfriend, but it's a glimpse into something mystical and beautiful, beautiful in a life which is otherwise about basic survival. And my next and last choice is from one of the most powerful books ever written, in my opinion. It's Birdsong by Sebastian Fawkes. And as you probably know, much of the action of the book takes place on the battlefields of World War I. And there's a great deal of violence and death and sadness in this book. But early in the story, before the war, the protagonist, Stephen, goes from England to live with a family in Amiens to learn about the textile trade. And he falls in love with Isabella, who is the wife of the owner of the house, who is quite sadistic in the way he treats her. In this scene, the couple have come across each other in a downstairs room. There are servants around and they're aware of that. I'm just going to read you a small passage. So everything slides around and I struggle with my glasses. I'm not being able to see properly. Oh goodness, right. They were leaning against the wall of the room and he had slipped his hand through the fastening at the back of her skirt. He could feel the satin under his fingers, then a round soft swell beneath. He felt her fingers on the front of his trousers. We must stop, 
He pulled himself back. Yes, Lizetta has gone. Isabel was breathless. But M Marguerite, the red room? Yes, you go first and go up to your room. Give me ten minutes before you come down. All right, he said. Let me kiss you goodbye. He kissed her deeply and she began to sigh again and rubbed herself against him. Please, she said, please. He did not know if she meant him to stop or to continue. He'd lifted her skirts as she stood with her back to the wall and now had his fingers between her legs. Come to me, she whispered, her breath hot in his ear. Into me now. He removed her fumbling fingers from his trousers and freed himself. His shoulder was next to the polished wood of a glass-fronted bookcase. Behind Isabella's head was a framed picture of flowers in a terracotta pot. He had to lift her a little, clasping her legs around his waist so that he could not move but had to bear her weight. The flowers moved half a turn on their hook as her shoulder nudged them. I find that an incredibly moving. I, I think it's one of the most erotic scenes I've ever come across. Um, you know, there's the whole, there's, yes, there's a bit of a bodily detail there. Um, and, you know, but, but the, the texture in there, you know, slipping the, his fingers through the fastenings at the back of her skirt, the satin under his fingers, lifting her skirt, his fingers, a fumbling fingers and breath hot in his ear. There's also the everyday detail there, the pot, you know, the picture that moves. It's a reminder of the kind of, you know, this is her husband's house. This is a place, you know, that she barely fits into and they could be discovered at any moment. So there's plenty of sensuality in there to capture her, our, um, our imagination. Um, but it really invites us into something much deeper. So basically, you know, that's, you know, these are just some offerings of some of the things I think are very you know, sexy in the form of writing. And my last thing, and I know my time's up, but I'm going to be naughty and just go on for 30 seconds more. Um, I wanted, the last thing I was, wanted to share with you, I was discussing this talk with my own lover, Andrew, who many of you will know, and he summed it up so well, much better than I could. After I read him the scenes I'd chosen, he said, the crap sex scenes you get just focus on the physical, but in really good sex scenes, you're transported into the story. The more detail of the genital stuff you're given, the more you feel distance from what's happening to these people. And his most revealing comment was, I want to be a dirty bastard myself by using my imagination, not reading somebody else's version of it. Thank you.